What's pop it? Brand new merch soon dropping. Like mm-hmm. with the music, I thought it was about to be like the moment moment. Luckily, it's been this every time. Now, in an earlier video about Lil Uzi Vert's record deal, I called Jack Harlow riffraff if he had stricter parents. And while I wish by no means to drop any shade on the vanilla gorilla himself, over the past year, handsome Mr. Harlow has proven to the world that what he has to offer is something unlike anything we've seen in hip hop before. In 2020, this Kentucky Fried white rapper got his career truly poppin'. With his infectious breakout hit, What's Poppin', slowly infiltrating the hip hop culture after getting a slick Cole Bennett directed video, and more Recently, a star-studded remix featuring microphone killer Lil Wayne, lady killer Tory Lanez, and actual killer DaBaby. But life wasn't always so poppin' for Jackman Thomas Harlow. Jack Harlow actually begun rapping at the young age of 12, apparently at this point asking his mother how he could possibly become the best rapper in the world. Now, at the time, she didn't really know much about the rap game, and unfortunately, she wasn't able to inform him that the fastest way to the top of the rap game is a collection of offensive face tattoos and problematic fentanyl addiction. So, being a fan of Malcolm Gladwell, Well's iconic book, Outliers, she told him that in order to master the rap game, he would need to put in 10,000 hours of practice. And going by these numbers, he would have to work on his rap craft around four to five hours a day to have a chance of being a master by the time he was 18. Joking aside though, that is genuinely good advice from Mama Harlow, AKA the leading lady of Louisville. In fact, she's even said in her own interview that she can't take credit for Jack's success because apparently even way back at age 11, he had already declared that he was gonna be the greatest rapper in the world and that's on him. In fact, in many ways, Jack Harlow's mother is actually the main inspiration for his rap career. As he explained, she used to blast NWA, Public Enemy, and Missy Elliott constantly while he was a child. I think she was a hip-hop fan in the 90s, Public Enemy, Tribe Called Quest. Um, Eminem, Outkast, and she introduced me to that and then I kind of like took it from there. She even said that it was her son that had introduced her to her new empowerment anthem, Kanye West Black Skinhead. Anyway, after being told the keys to rap game mastery by his mama, the hard work in Harlow Dooley got to work. Starting out with a humble Windows stock recording software before graduating to the dizzying heights of the Guitar Hero microphone. And to be fair, Harlow was really putting in work, eventually releasing his very first CD, Rippin' and Rappin', which he himself would sell at school, apparently earning a cool $80 from selling 40 units. I believe with that many sales, he got certified dust. And I'm pretty sure that sold more than Smoke Perp's album, actually. But anyway, not content with being a guitar hero forever, in seventh grade, Jack Harlow got a professional microphone and made his first full-length mixtape called Extra Credit under the name Mr. Harlow. He put together 100 copies of this album, which he was easily able to give away for free. Another excuse that Smoke Perp likes to use. But eventually, all of Harlow's hard work began to attract outside attention. And by high school, Harlow was fending off interest from the major record labels. I actually kind of had some label interest around the time I turned 14. That supposed label interest came from none other than Justin Bieber's manager and Taylor Swift agitator Scooter Braun, who had apparently wasted Harlow and his mother's time with a go nowhere meeting and a very lame concept of a young 14 year old Harlow apparently stumbling out onto another rapper's stage and surprising the fans with his amazing impromptu rapping abilities. While that meeting with Scooter turned out to be nothing more than an L on wheels, Jack did eventually get to the negotiation stage working on a record deal with Def Jam, but then suddenly the person they were working on that deal with left the company. It was actually kind of a fallout with the labels, like it just didn't make sense. Okay. At 14, he had a fallout with I was very disappointed at the time. Now you see, unlike Lil Uzi Vert, Jack Harlow managed to get his record label tantrums out the way before he reached adolescence. But while initially heartbroken at the loss of a Def Jam deal, apparently he later realized that being a 14-year-old novelty white rapper tied to a five-album deal would have certainly ended up being an L. I didn't see anything except I didn't get signed. I was a deer in the headlights and I was like, that's what it is, that's what making it is. But now, I'm really glad it didn't happen. So not dejected by major label politics, instead of running crying to Rock Nation, in November 2014, Harlow kicked off junior year by dropping another mixtape called Finally Handsome at the young age of 16. And off the back of Finally Handsome, he managed to turn his own high school into his core fan base, building the foundations for a kick-ass career that would come in the years to follow. Like I said, when I was like 12, I was recording in my room, just putting stuff out on SoundCloud. Okay. My audience was my high school, really. And then I just kind of built an audience in Louisville, and like by the time I was in high school, I was able to sell out shows and like build a local audience. Was that your thing that everyone in school was like, this kid raps? Yeah, definitely. Everyone in the city knew I was rapping. 
So now he was finally handsome, Harlow's career started working overtime. He followed that project up with his first commercial EP, the Handsome Harlow EP. He dropped a single called Never Woulda Known. He even opened for Vince Staples in Louisville in March 2016. Funny, now Vince Staples would probably kill to open up for Jack Harlow. But with his career charging forward, after graduating high school, Harlow decided to curve college like a young white Kanye. In fact, Jack even recounted an incident telling his school administrator that he wanted to be a rapper, something that was met with a look of disgust. I'd sure like to see the look on that administrator's face when they look at the billboard charts. So he had clearly committed fully to the rap game. And this hot streak of career productivity culminated in the release of the mixtape 18, the celebration of finally completing his 10,000 hours of practice that he needed to become a top tier rapper. And with the new mixtape came new singles. 18 featured Got Me Thinking, but came along with a music video where Jack Harlow gets Will Smithed. And off the back of that project's release, Jack Harlow hit the road and got to play shows all over the country, performing at South by Southwest, Bonnaroo, and even his own Louisville's Forecastle Festival. But much like the English Empire, Jack Harlow wasn't content with just occupying his own local castles. So from here, he kept on dropping music and building his own empire of charming, wholesome white boy raps. Hyping fans up with new bangers like Hitchcock, Routine, and Dark Knight, with the latter being the lead single off of his next mixtape, Gazebo. Apparently inspired by the tranquil vibes inside of everybody's favorite makeshift garden party shelter. I don't know if you've ever been in a gazebo, but it's like a tranquil experience. And yes. so I rock with gazebos. Me and my guy over here were like trying to figure out the name and we said gazebo and we we're like, that slaps. Gazebo also featured the track Wasted Youth, where we saw Jack wearing a fire polo shirt, a piece of clothing which has become something of a staple in Jack's wardrobe as his career continues on. And I assume at some point he packed up his impeccable collection of polo collared shirts and went on his 15 city tour to promote Gazebo. But little did he know that Waiting in the Wings were DJ Drama and Don Cannon of the infamous record label Generation Now, looking to take Jack Harlow to the next level. Now, Jack Harlow had always wanted to sign to DJ Drama. I remember the summer after I graduated, he followed me on Instagram and I was so happy. I was like, I'm gonna sign to DJ Drama. I was like, I know I'm gonna sign to Drama. Now, as Harlow's career progressed, he began to grow out of the confines of his native Louisville. So he headed out to greener pastures in Atlanta, where he ended up meeting his mentor. Everyone in Louisville was starting to know about me, but I realized I needed to keep it moving. So I went to Atlanta and, uh, Got it jumping. I was cool with a couple guys that took me up to Main Street and introduced me to Drama. I shook his hand and I started recording in the studio and he's like, yo, I want to sign you. I like your music. Now the DJ Drama connection actually comes courtesy of behind the scenes rap legend, engineer to some of your favorite tracks, and the most slippery producer in hip hop, KY. I actually linked up with KY Engineering down in Atlanta, who's from Kentucky too. It's easy to slide down there. So KY slides into a tight little studio session with Jack Harlow and DJ Drama isn't far behind. KY was like, I think I got something for you, okay. being Jack Harlow. Now, in case you don't know who this smooth-talking mofo named DJ Drama is, you should pause this now, go back and watch my video about him beating a Rico case. Because this man near single-handedly made the mixtape game everything it is today with his legendary Gangster Grizzle series. And along with fellow DJ, producer, and medieval ball-firing artillery, Don Cannon, they started the record label Generation Now. The label that infamously signed Lil Uzi Vert, turned him into a Grammy-nominated household name, and then ended up beefing with him. And if you don't know that story, I suggest you go and watch my video on that record deal too. So anyway, we are talking about that DJ Drama and Don Cannon. Anywho, Jack had gone out to meet Drama and apparently from the moment they met and started working in the studio, they never stopped. That night he had me just record and I was showing up, showing up and then when I signed, I've been in there every night since. Apparently the two got on on the basis of them both being such hard workers and apparently Drama truly does get the best out of it. I'm about my business too and that's what I like about Drama is he's like so on it bro. Uh -huh. He checks me all the time. Mm. Checks me all the time. In fact Harlow even said that at the beginning he didn't feel like he really knew Drama that well. So he decided to ask him out for dinner, get to know him a little bit better and try and get inside the mind of the CEO who he was entrusting with his career. I remember when I, like, I was six months into being signed to him and I, like, I felt like I didn't really know him though. Like I didn't feel like we had like a real relationship and I asked him to go to this restaurant, but he loved it. But we had a great combo. Like we just got super cool after that. So Harlow is finally on Generation Now and Team DJ Drama. Hell, he even asked him for a gangster Grizzles drop. First time I asked him for that, he's like, bro, you don't want that. I'm like, boy, I got the file now. I can put it on anything. So funnily enough, much like we saw happen when Lil Uzi Vert first aligned himself with Generation Now, we quickly saw Jack Harlow landing big ticket media appearances alongside his new mentors, including a big introduction on the radio show of non-answer 
having radio legend Sway, where Sway even recounted DJ Drama bringing Lil Uzi Vert to his attention in exactly the same way as he was doing for Harlow. DJ Drama, somebody I respect and love, mm -hmm. once came to me and said, Sway, there's a movement about, that's about to take place. We want you to be a part of it. Don't miss it. What are you talking about, Lil Uzi? And of course, once we get into things, it is then announced officially that Jack Harlow is indeed a Generation Now artist. So you a Generation Now artist? Yeah, yeah. Congratulations, Generation Now, appreciate Generation it. Now baby. Salute. Woo. Salute. So Harlow signs with the big dogs and continues to drop big songs. Songs that sound just a little bit more polished than his music did before he met his new mentors. We're talking bangers like Sundown, where he continues to flex the finest entries in his ever expanding collection of fire polo shirts. That same month, he drops his major label debut mixtape called Loose, which was even nominated for the best mixtape at the 2019 BET Awards, unfortunately losing out to Megan the Stallion. And by November, he was going on a Loose United States tour, and presumably looking for Loose United States ladies. But of course, he was still working, and while on the road, he actually dropped the song Pick Your Phone Up with K Camp that came along with an acid flashback inducing music video showcasing yet another fire Swaghetti Kugi Polo shirt. That is rocking, bro. And from there, keeping it moving into 2019, Jack Harlow and Generation Now would flood the market with fire music, dropping tracks like Cody Banks, where Jack appears in the music video alongside his slightly more handsome sign language interpreter. He had the track Sylvia. There was the track Drip Drop featuring Tiny Man holding a normal sized umbrella, Sci High the Prince. With all of this musical rainfall taking us up to August of 2019, when Harlow truly takes a giant dive into the industry and his name begins to spread like wildfire. All off the back of the big commercial single through the night featuring none other than Bryson Tiller. A track that came along with a roller rink themed music video that looks like possibly the most intimidating setting I could ever set foot in. Just imagine me clinging for dear life to the sides of that roller rink while Jack Harlow just glides by in an immaculate polo shirt. Anyway, this big name collab must have been a big moment for Jack Harlow, who had actually called Bryson Tiller his dream opening gig back in 2015, explaining how much he looked up to him as one of the only artists that had truly broken through and made it big coming out of Louisville. Bryson's shown me love since I was in high school. He sent messages, showing support. He would retweet occasionally, so he's always shown love just off the hometown thing. So off the back of this big collab, Harlow followed up with another mixtape titled Confetti, which he then immediately toured in the US. But to be fair, it wasn't all love. Pitchfork gave it a measly 5.6, describing Harlow as not having much identity, but being in possession of a low stakes charm. But bear in mind, this is the same Pitchfork reviewer that just gave Pop Smoke's new album a 6.5. Anyway, Harlow read this bad review and was bummed. Somebody did a Pitchfork review of Confetti. Mm. I got a 5.6. Okay. Not what I was hoping for. Mm. And I made the mistake of reading the article, a really well-written article about how subpar my music is. But Harlow decided not to be offended by what some loser incel sitting around in his basement writing about other musicians that have actually made good art. Oh. Mm. Not put down by a bad review, Harlow decided to get back into the studio, where the Generation Now crew pushed him hard, leading him to drop more music videos for his confetti project than he had on any recent project. There was Heavy Hitter and Ghost, both of which saw him rapping in front of cars and crowds of people. There was Warsaw, where he rapped in front of some bums and a bunch of people again. River Road, where he rapped in front of a broken camcorder. And Walk in the Park, where he raps in front of that same bunch of people from earlier, but for some reason he's locked them in a cage. God damn, is there anything this man won't rap in front of? But really though, all of this was just leading up to one spectacular moment. In January 2020, after rapping in front of numerous groups of people, Harlow finally blesses the world with his certified immortal banger, What's Poppin'? What's Poppin' was truly the breakout moment for Jack Harlow. I don't know about you, but for me, when I heard the first note of that beat, I knew that it was gonna be straight fire. Made by beatmaker of the moment, Jetson made, of course, of DaBaby's Suge fame, and Harlow glides effortlessly over this beat with sharp but entertaining bars. Combine that with an impressive flow and a non-stop list of quotables. Spread a well-shot lyrical lemonade video on top of that, where we see Jack Harlow rapping in a late night diner. In fact, part of the video was even shot from the perspective of Smoke Perk's last mixtape. Well, the whole thing was a recipe for success, and it didn't take long for it to start popping in the charts. Harlow announced it had already gone platinum by May. By June, it had gone 16 on Billboard. And before you knew it came the Wheezy, Tory and the Baby remix, which Harlow initially announced on his Instagram, tearing up the charts, first coming in at number eight, and then with the help of insufferable TikTokers, rising up to number two on the Billboard Hot 100, losing out on the number one, funnily enough, to the Baby and Roddy Rich themselves, who were still dominating the charts with their song Rockstar. Ironically, with the Baby even rapping about being number one on the charts in the US and the UK in his verse on the remix of What's Popping, that is the biggest flex I've ever seen in my life. And if that wasn't enough winning for you, 
my god, what's popping charted in 15 other countries internationally? We're getting that different kinds of money, people. Get the get the bureau to change. I don't know. I'm tired. Fuck you. Anyway, after its release, what's popping was also paired up with Jack Harlow's latest mixtape, Sweet Action, which in my opinion is laced with bangers. Standouts include I Wanna See Some Ass and Hey Big Head. In fact, over the course of the past few months, Jack Harlow, in my eyes, has definitely become one of the most interesting acts in hip hop and certainly one to watch. He doesn't take things too seriously. He can really wrap his ass off and he just seems to have a pretty positive vibe to himself in interviews. And I'll be honest with you, his music just seems to strike a note with me in a way that not many artists have been able to recently. He's just a goofy looking fun guy that can rap real good and doesn't fit in. That's how I feel. And you know what? It's not actually dissimilar to how I felt about Lil Uzi Vert when he first came out. Now, Harlow himself has acknowledged just how much of his artistic growth has taken place since he got down with Generation Now. I'm into getting better, man. I just wanna, I just wanna be like on the rush more. I really wanna be one of the goats, bro. Mm. I really like care about music, so I'm into it. And they, any game they can give me, I'm taking it. He clearly wants to be a goat in this game. And although I mercilessly make fun of Lil Uzi Vert, mainly because he wears stupid clothes and is generally quite easy to poke fun at, I'd be lying if I said I didn't consider Lil Uzi one of the greatest artists of the new school of hip hop. And he is absolutely one of my favorite artists in recent years. Is no cap. And considering the fact that Jack and Uzi are on the same label, they're probably gonna end up having very similar career trajectories. After all, DJ Drama introduced Jack Harlow to the world as recently as December 2018 on Sway's show. DJ Drama did exactly the same thing with Lil Uzi Vert back in February 2016. So essentially, over the course of about four years and four months, Lil Uzi Vert has achieved a lot. A number one album with a record-breaking debut that saw every single track from Eternal Take and Love vs. The World enter the Hot 100 charts, making him the first person in history to do this. This put him behind Drake and tied with Lil Wayne for the record of most simultaneous Hot 100 hits in one week, charting a whopping 22 tracks. Uzi's highest charting solo track was the Futsal Shuffle that came in at number five, and credit where credit is due, he also had a number one hit with his feature on the Migos Bad and Bougie. God damn, Uzi, you've been killing. In it. Salute to you. Now let's compare that to Jack Hollow. It's been about one year and seven months or so since his Sway debut. He's of course landed a number two hit with What's Poppin'. On the one hand, you could make an argument that he has in some ways surpassed Lil Uzi Vert's footstool shuffle because that only went number five. But then again, to play Uzi's advocate, it took a big name remix for him to do it. And then again, let's compare where Uzi was at this point in the game one year and seven months from his Sway debut. He'd already gone number one with Bad and Bougie and he'd gone number seven with EXO Tour Life. So maybe you could make the argument that Jack is ahead on solo chart hits, but in other ways he's behind and Lil Uzi Vert has a hell of a lot of achievements under his belt. And I've got a funny feeling that it won't take that long for Jack Harlow to pop up with another big name collaboration single that is shooting for a number one. Please 69, please 69, please 69, please 69. Essentially, if Jack stays on track, I believe that he could build up as much of a dedicated fan base as Lil Uzi has. A different fan base, but one that is as significant. And if he builds up a fan base just as ravenous as Lil Uzi Vert's and continuing to drop unique bangers like he has been so far. Who knows, maybe he could end up dropping a big extended project, as big, impactful, and anticipated as Eternal It Take. In a different way, in his own way, but similar. But hey, who knows? Five years ago, you probably didn't even know who Lil Uzi Vert was. And now, he has pretty much cemented his place as one of the greatest of all time. Hell, in four years time, Jack Harlow could be the biggest thing in rap. Or who knows, he could have fallen off harder than Trinidad James and end up busting tables in that same diner that What's Poppin' was filmed in. But if I know one thing, it's that Jack Harlow is competitive by nature. And this is the same guy who says that he loves beef and controversy is fun. In fact, we nearly saw a little bit of beef sizzling at the side of the skillet, back when DJ Drama and Lil Uzi Vert were beefing over contracts. If you remember, Jack Harlow famously announced on Instagram that he had signed his soul away to DJ Drama and said in the same post, double tap if you can't wait for Eternal Take. To which Uzi replied, sharing the photo, covering Jack Harlow's face with a clown emoji. A move which ironically pleased Jack Harlow to no end. As soon as I saw it, I got butterflies in my stomach. <laughs> Why, just because he was acknowledging you? I just couldn't believe it. I was just shocked. I didn't think he would acknowledge me. In fact, he actually said that the purpose of posting this picture was specifically so that he could align himself with DJ Drama during that feud. And apparently, all of this public beefing was going on the very night after he had taken DJ Drama out for dinner to get to know him better. One, I wanted to show I'm with Drama. There was a lot of shit being talked about Drama. Also, don't forget that Jack referenced being called a clown in his What's Popping video. Now, if you know my channel and you've watched the past video that I did on Lil Uzi Vert's record deal, you'll know my position. I kind of think that Uzi 
blew up real big and realized that he wasn't getting as big of a slice of the pie as he thought he deserved. And in doing this, he kind of refused to acknowledge the fact that DJ Drama and Don Cannon took a huge role in getting Uzi the opportunities that he needed to get to that level. You know, like putting him on a stadio tour with XO in the weekend. They sent you on that XO tour life, Uzi, and now you're getting ungrateful. Or other opportunities like giving Uzi his debut on Sway's morning show, just like he did for Jack Harlow. A fact which even Sway himself couldn't help but pour a little bit of shade on when Jack Harlow returned to the show a year later. Generation now, still with them, right? Hell yeah. There it is. <laughs> no motherfuckers get blown up, they leave the camp. People help you get to where you're going, you forget about them. That's why you but you gotta notice that, even though Harlow kind of made fun of Uzi in that original post, he never outwardly trash talks him because he clearly looks up to Uzi and is inspired by his art. How excited are you for Eternal Ataki? Can't wait to hear it. Is He's it an Ataki? inspiring artist. He's, he's a great artist. Right. Can't wait to hear it. It'll inspire me to make some good music. So, question is, could Jack Harlow surpass Lil Uzi Vert? I think he definitely could. He's in the right hands, and he seems to be in the right headspace. I think DJ Drama is very good at spotting special talent, and I just get a funny feeling that Jack Harlow is definitely the real deal. I just hope that he stays focused, continues making the music that is true to himself and who he is as an artist. And with time, I think he's gonna carve out a special place for himself in hip hop. A space that could potentially end up being as unique and treasured as the one Lil Uzi Vert has carved himself too. All he's gotta do is not fall out with his label bosses, because that is not popping. Peace, y'all. What's popping? Brand new merch soon dropping. That's right, people. I'm about to drop some brand new merch in the merch store. Keep your eyes peeled for the next video. I'm going to be dropping this awesome trap law bear design created by Chung Fame, who won my last Instagram design competition. Shout out to him. I'm super excited for this to be dropping. And I would really appreciate if you guys went and copped some of this when it drops in my next video, because I'd really appreciate your support. And I kind of just think these designs are super dope. I'm gassed to be wearing one. Mine's on the way and yours will be soon, baby. Also want to give a humongous shout out to all of my Patreon supporters, the Patreon gang gang. As you know, we recently did the competition to have the patrons decide what the next story on the channel is going to be, and you decided that it was going to be the rise of Tentacion. So I'm actually about to start work on that story in the next couple of days, and that will be ready for you by the end of the month, and I will be shouting everybody from the Patreon out in the credits with an amazing original song with all your names in it, baby. It's going to be lit. But of course, until then, I want to give a humongous shout out to to the patrons, that is of course Abraham Perez, Alex Knight, Alien Evasion, Ban Johnson, Basically a Bush, Bash the Prince, Black Lives Matter, F the Police, 5021, Brandon Wedlow, Chris Hedrick, Chosen One, Chris, Chris J, Claire Audient, Deshaun Campbell, Dreezy Draco, Duquan Jones, Dylan Gordon, Eddie Aguila, Eric Prince Nysamore, Eric Fredrickson, Frank Forsiglia, Griffin Fuller, Hakim Onyedikachi, Shadimu, Harry Vagina, Henry B. Ryant, J Superior, Jaden Cho, Jameson Filippi, Jason Wyman, Javier Gonzalez, Jay, Jessica Simmons, Kizzle Bot, Lord Bael, M. Clay, Mark Vader, Mathis Martin, Matt Kitchen, Max Havaway 2000, Niraj Shukla, Nomad Quinn, Otaku VS, Pamela Vigil, Penis Bag, Mick Penis Face, yeah, I said it! Ryder, Sean Anderson, Senjagara, Shazza from the South, Tammy Whittington, Trauma Hound, Tuxedo Mask, Vampires for Hire, Von Snoogle, Vivi, Wilson Psychedelic, and all of the other names who you see on screen right now. Thank you so much. Your support means the world to me, especially in the midst of the occasional, you know, little copyright fuckery or whatever. I, I, had, a, I had a bit of a shit couple of days, but it's all love, baby. I appreciate your support. It means the most to me that you guys have got my back and you're riding for me. Or I'm going to continue to ride for you. Pause. Can't wait for the Patreon video. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace out.